I can do. What? I can do. I can do. Okay. I can do. I can do. The right thing. I understand that Jesus is the Son of God. I understood that as a child. I didn't understand why you would take the punishment for something that you had like nothing to do with. When I was six, my dad and my mom got divorced and my dad left my mom with myself and my sister. Um, my mom had a really hard time and we lost everything. My mom couldn't afford to keep us anywhere and we didn't have anything. So we would jump from place to place with people and we would go to shelters and eventually my mom got a job. She started driving a cab and she would work all day and pretty much all night to be able to pay for a hotel. I remember a lot of times walking outside and my neighbor making drug deals or um, I would babysit for a lady who was a prostitute because she had a baby and um, she didn't have anywhere to put her while she worked. I specifically remember this is when I started questioning my relationship with God and God as a whole. Um, I didn't understand why he would allow things like this to happen. Um, a lot of nights, my mom didn't feel comfortable leaving me where we would be because she would work night times as well. So I would like ride in the car with her while she worked and pick people up and sleep in the car sometimes. And then she would like drop, I would bring clothes for school and she would just take me straight to school. Um, eventually, she got a job and she worked and worked and worked. And I started going to study school where I started like making friends. And when I met Serena at Milton High School, my story with Jesus really started to change. She would always be like, let's go to church, go to church, let's go to church. And I was set on not going to church. Um, I did not want to go to church because I was angry at God and I just did not care for learning about someone who I was mad at for not changing circumstances that were beyond my control. Eventually, Zarina wore me down into getting into the car on a Sunday morning and going to church. Um, she was set on sitting like third row in and I <laughs> was like, why are we so close to the front? Um, once we were there, worship started and that is like the most powerful part of service for me and I felt an energy in my soul and within that room that I'd never felt before. By the end of it, like I wanted to come back and um, it became like a routine. I remember one weekend, Andy was talking about circles are better than rows. And he started talking about Wombaland and children. And I was like, ooh, I love kids, like this is great. And I went to an orientation where I met Holly. And on the application for Wombaland, it asks if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you have questions. And I totally had questions about what that meant. And she was like, well, let's go sit down and we'll talk about it. And I started meeting with her on Sundays and we would like bring our Bibles and she would like go over the questions with me and kind of just starting to build my foundation and like educating me on more of like, who Jesus is and like why and how he got to where he was. And I was just like drinking up everything she was telling me. And I remember sitting in her car and um, uh, talking about like how far I'd come in like one year as far as my relationship with God. And that's when I kind of was like, okay, like this is it. Like, I give you everything. I prayed, um, to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior in Holly's car in mid-September, I think it was. So I want to say my junior year of high school, Zarina moved away, and so she was like my ride to church. So I started paying to get to church, and I would Uber, or I would like wake my mom up early, early, and um, be like, Mom, I need you to take me to church. I need you to take me to church. What started to change for me was the feeling of being so lost, I guess. Like I felt more secure and I felt like that even in times of like the unknown where I was unstable, um, I kind of just knew like just put it in God's hands. Without God and Jesus, I think I would have ended up like a lot of the people around me. Um, 
drugs, alcohol, living a life that is not, I think I would probably be dead, if I'm being honest. Um, he pulled me out of a really dark time where I could have gone in a completely different direction. There are a lot of things that have happened and will happen in my life that I can let define who I am, who I will become, but I put my identity in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You ready to work on our song? I can do, I can do, what? I can do, I can do, okay. I can do, I can do, the right thing. good job, Gracie. Yeah. yeah, this is my friend Mitzi. And Mitzi, you set the bar really high by Ubering to church. You know, <laughs> none of us have an excuse for missing a Sunday anymore. No, honestly, Mitzi, uh, journeying alongside you the past couple years has been incredible. You're an amazing person. And what I love about your story is when you had questions and doubts and um, even when times were hard, you just continued to press into Jesus and you just continued to ask those questions and just take steps, even if they were baby steps, towards Jesus. And you experienced uh, a love and a hope that only comes from a relationship with your heavenly Father. And even though your story, it's been hard until up to this point, you know, you're right when you say it does not define you. Because I have seen the light that is in you since you have started walking with Jesus. And your story, it has shown me personally, and probably all of us here today, that God's love, it does not run out. So because of your public profession of faith, because you put your trust in Jesus, it is my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.